Well, good morning. It's great to see you all. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us. Uh, as Walter indicated, I'm not part of the important function at ONR. He said the important function is those guys down, at, guys and gals down in the departments. He couldn't have said it better. And that's the reason we are here today. Um, we're going to spend two days. And we're going to spend two days talking not about technology and not about science. What we're really spending our time doing, I think, is, I think, is, is network, networking amongst each other. And there's a purpose behind that network. Um, if you can go to the next thing, Matt, I'd appreciate it. So I'm going, to do, I'm going to do three things here quickly this morning. One, give us a little context about that networking. Um, two, we're going to talk about the, the CNR challenge and how that fits in. And I'll take a couple questions if we have time. OK, so three things. When I got to O&R, I had been, I had, I had had incidental contact with the Naval Research Enterprise throughout my career as a submarine officer. So being inserted into this world last fall, I quickly recognized that the strength of this part of our organization is the network that it has created over time in its seven decades of existence, and the networks that, that continue to form and reform as we move forward. And then the question I have to ask my team, and I ask it of you, is how well do those networks operate today? And my, my hypothesis is that we can make these networks operate a little bit better because we have seen when this network operates well, our nation, our Navy, our Marine Corps gain advantage. And we've seen that time and time and time again. So we need to amp this up because the pressure that we are under as a Navy and Marine Corps is, as you might have gotten a sense from that video, I think you get a sense from it every day you pick up the paper, you go online to read the news, wherever you go to get your news, you see what it's like in the world. So our Navy and Marine Corps is out there at the front edge, globally deployed, managing all of those situations with the kit, the capability set that we as a team provide. So our legacy and our history is pretty rich in doing that. And we walk that all the way back to our creation as an organization, O&R, back to, back to the lesson that we took out of World War II. And that lesson, frankly, was technology matters. And we as a nation can gain advantage if we become the first to field these advances at scale. The lesson we learned in World War II was that if we're going to do it, we got to be organized. And when I say we got to be organized, it's that, it's that secret sauce of three parts of this network. The government and smart folks in the government who understand technology and who understand the military application of technology. It's industry, because at the end of the day, industry is where these things get produced at scale and delivered. And third, and certainly not, not least, is the academic community inside of our nation and, and actually around the globe. So those three elements form the basis of the network. But that network that existed back in the 1940s when we got created is different from the network today. Those three parts operate differently. So we need to figure out how we make those operate faster. Why faster? Because we don't have the luxury of time. When you look back at our experience in World War II, the reason we got created as an organization was because coming out of it, the leadership in this nation knew that the advantage that got created through our experience during that long conflict took time to put in place. And they envisioned a world where, because technology moves quicker, and you feel that again today, um, as it moves quicker, we won't have the time to reestablish the networks for this country to get where they need to go from a, from a technological advantage being delivered all the way to the warfighter. We don't have two years to put it together and to get it moving at scale. We don't have two minutes. So we have to be prepared every single day. And we have to stay ahead of the slipstream that everybody else is in as the world moves at pace. And so what changed this whole dynamic, from my perspective, Moore's Law. Right? That's clicking along at a pace and we need to move as fast as that pace. We're going to do that through partnering with you. So 
our, our awareness on the need of the Navy and Marine Corps from a technology perspective is about speed. And the partnership with you allows us to, to get from point A to point B. This is a classic supply and demand problem, right? We have a demand, it is dynamic, and it's gonna change every single day. If you ask us what we need today, we'll give you an answer, and tomorrow it might be a little bit different. But the nature of this balance between supply and demand, I think, has fundamentally changed. Because I don't even think our demand can keep up with the way the world is supplying technology. And you folks are in tune, largely, with the supply side of this, of this problem set. So we need to figure out better how to connect to you and to those who connect to you to get the supply moving and match up with our demand as required and frankly shape our demand because we can't afford to do it the way we have been doing it over the last 20 or 30 years. You'll see that reflected as we move through the set of discussions with Navy leaders, Marine Corps leaders, Department of Defense leaders, technology leaders. You can't afford to do it the way you were doing it before. We can't afford that because we don't have the time. Time's the one thing we're not gonna get back in this one. So we need your help there. Okay, so it's important that we work together. This week, these two days, we're gonna discuss some technologies and you'll have an opportunity to talk to, to my side, the demand side, who are trying to couple with you the supply side to get this stuff done, all right? Those personal interactions are incredibly important. Again, that's the reason you're here. You're not here to go see a technology, you're here to talk to other human beings about how we can get it to the field for the Navy and Marine Corps. That's our purpose. If we do that, we win. If we don't do that, we don't have an advantage and we might not get to where we need to be. Okay, let's go to the next picture. So that's why we're here. Who's here? Lots of y'all are here. If you look at the 3,000 of you uh, who are probably a, a, a portion still moving through registration, I apologize for that if that was a hardship this morning. Um, you see that some of us are like me, the dot mill world. But we've got others. We have folks here uh, internationally, folks from New Zealand, all the way from Japan. Thank you for being here. And from each part of that network that I talked about across government, academia, and industry, and then wherever else we can create a portion of the network to get us where we need to go. So thank you for being here. Take advantage of learning from each other because everybody approaches this with a different perspective. All of us, all of us is much better than any one of us trying to get this done. So it takes all of us. So start a conversation, continue a dialogue that you've, that you've started, bring somebody else into that dialogue that you've got going because we will be better, better if you do that. Let's go to the next picture if you would. Okay. We talked a little bit about perspectives. You will hear from folks who will share what they think about technology and how it applies to application in the military and some of the friction that exists in today's system. So you're gonna hear from CNO tomorrow and I will I'll double tap this, this idea that uh, CNO is gonna be here at 7.30 and he's gonna start talking and I'd love to have you here to listen to him because if you wanna hear somebody who is passionate about technology and passionate about the Navy and how those two intersect and how we need to change our behaviors, Admiral John Richardson is, is the person you need to listen to. So please be here and, and don't just listen, but be ready to ask him questions about, uh, about his perspective or offer your assistance in some way that you can. He will appreciate that. Uh, General Selva is gonna be here, the vice chairman, uh, recently, recently reappointed to that post. Uh, great perspectives. We got industry, we got some we got astronauts, we got all kinds of people coming to talk to you, but this is a mere, a mere surface brush of who we could have come talk to it. But I think you'll get the sense and you'll understand the reinforcing fires that come across about accelerating and getting it done faster. All right, so let's go to the next picture. We talked about this a little bit. I never want to forget this. So I drive my organization to think about this all the time. ONR got created in 1946 because of our experience in World War II. We do not want to lose the secret sauce. The secret sauce is this. It's you working together. If we stop this dialogue for whatever reason, we're gonna lose, all right? So, so my ability to keep this family of folks robustly engaging 
in moving technology forward, use inspired so the Navy and Marine Corps can gain advantage in the maritime domain, we as a nation win. If we lose that, we lose an advantage. All right, so just keep thinking about that and, and I'd be happy to sit down with any one of you and, and give you my perspectives at length about that particular um, grounding that we have in history. All right, let's go to the next one if you would. Okay, so Walter mentioned this framework. In past sessions, uh, what number is this for us of an ST Expo, Walter? Number five. So we've been doing this for quite some time. We have talked about uh, the, the science and technology priorities for my organization and for the Navy and Marine Corps at large. As we look to, to solving the problem, and the problem is first to field. We need product in the field at scale. This is not a science and technology problem. It's a science and technology, there's an aspect to it from the S&T community, but it's really about absorption across the whole continuum of research and development all the way out through the acquisition system so we get it onto the ship, the plane, the submarine, where it needs to go. This framework, the idea behind the framework was to, was to begin to address that continuum of activity that goes well beyond just this part, well beyond just the O&R piece, all right? Because we have to partner with lots of folks to get this done. That partnership has to be done at speed. So if we could create a frictionless plane where we operate all the way from the idea out to the fielding, we're gonna win. The more friction we put in that system, and today there's a lot of friction, we sub-optimize our ability to be first to field, all right? So that's what this is about. I encourage you to read it. Um, you, can, you can find it either in print or on, on this thing, right? So I encourage you to use, use your, your link and download the app and, and go ahead and read that framework. It's, it's pretty pithy, couple of pages with pictures. So you know, even a submariner can get through that without falling asleep. Um, I encourage you to look at it. Then the, the addendum to that goes a little bit deeper. And that, that you may find a little more interesting in your conversations with with the folks you're gonna engage with in the technical side of this conference, all right? So that's where we're thinking about applying these thematic pushes towards gaining advantage with technology. So you got something to offer there? We wanna hear about it.